All right, hello, this is Christian. So in this video, we're going to connect to a Mongo database system using the MongoDB library for Node.js. Okay, so before we begin, I wanna go back to the website over here and just have a very quick review of the CRUD operations uh, for MongoDB. So if you go to the site over here, this is the link that will take you there. Um, and you have, you know, all these uh, functions to perform a CRUD operations, okay? So the insert, if you click over here on the left navigation menu, you have the insert, the select, this would be like a query uh, for select, the update, delete, and so on, okay? So again, I'm gonna be uh, uses JavaScript functions to perform these type of operations, okay? So um, just in here, if you do wanna uh, review, they're all here, okay? So I'll refer to this one, we um, do some any of these operations. But before we do that, though, I want to make sure that we have MongoDB running. So let's go here and look for uh, Compass. If you have not installed it, make sure you do. The MongoDB Compass uh, is the preferred choice for um, interacting with Mongo database. So connect here. And in my previous exercises at demos, I have created a database called Unit 6DB. Under there, I have a collection or table called Students. And then I inject, I inserted about a hundred records or documents in here already for testing purposes. Okay, so you can, you know, um, create any database of your choice, any data uh, um, you want to use, that doesn't really matter. But for this demo, I will be using this uh, collection and documents to perform the operations, right? So we'll keep this running. And now let's go to our IDE. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here, we'll call this, um, I don't know, I'm just called maybe, um, let's call it DB Connect for now, okay? So under here, I'm going to create the index.js folder for now. And then let's go ahead and initialize our um, folder. So here, make sure you inside that folder, do npm init dash y just to quickly instantiate that environment for us. Now we want to install uh, a few things. Um, well, I'm not going to use the express uh, uh, framework because I'm just basically trying to connect to the database and then display some data for that purpose. Okay, so if you want to display this data to the DOM a browser, then you want to go through the whole thing of creating a really nice site to do that for this example, which is going to connect to the database and retrieve data. Okay, so first, Let's install the MongoDB, okay? Um, that is all we need for this example. And so then now let's go ahead and instantiate our object over here, okay? So let me turn this off for now. Let's do our usual setup. What? Well, actually I need to uh, install Express, I'm sorry. I meant to say Express, um, I'm going to say express a handlebars is what I want to say, but I do need express, apologize. Okay, so NPM, I express for that. We can close that here. Then we're going to have our app is instantiation of the app, create a port number. I'll use a 9,000 and I'll just put the a URL. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll put here the um, host. This will be localhost, but I'll put the whole thing here, okay? So we don't have to do that later. So localhost, actually, um, it's better to use the IP address. Sometimes the localhost does have some kind of conflict. So that is what we do. So plus the port number, okay? And then we go ahead and add the listen to the port number, which is port here, and then cons. I'll do a little uh, sample here, console log, the uh, host. I should say server, but that's fine. Okay, so that is the uh, usual typical setup. And again, just to just make sure you can see things in the browser, you can always log the um, homepage um, so you can see it, I mean, for the browser. So uh, just do something like that, okay? So save and go to the terminal and let's connect and run this app. So again, if you don't have Noma installed, 
uh, make sure you do that. It's really helpful. If you have it, just type nomon. It should run your application, okay? If you happen to run and it had, you have this kind of a, a example at this problem, then you can also try using MPX and then nomon. Okay? That also uh, solves some problem as well. But anyway, so there it is. It's running on, low, on port number uh, 9000. So if I go back to my browser, uh, um, and just go in localhost 9000, you're going to see the message you put up here, real tiny call, hi. Okay, so you see that, that it's working, then we are ready to go. Okay, so you can keep this running as I mentioned, and we can close that, and we just keep updating our site. So first thing is we want to connect to MongoDB. So remember, we already installed the MongoDB driver. So we need to go ahead and import that up here. So I'm going to put at the very top here. Um, yeah, maybe up here. So it's not confusing with those other stuff. I'll put here the MongoDB client. We'll, we'll get the MongoDB client. The Mongo client is an object that is um, part of the MongoDB library. Okay, so if you do that, you're basically destructuring. We're just grabbing the object that we want. Okay, it's part of that. So make sure you put the curly brace around it. Uh, if you don't do this, then you can also create a variable called MongoDB client. But over here, you have to use a dot and then Mongo client. Okay. So either way is entirely up to you. This is just a variable assignment. I can assign to anything I want, A, B, C, doesn't matter. Uh, what I had earlier was you basically extract the Mongo client and put it right here, okay? So that is um, the, the client. Now, I'll leave that up here. And then down here, let's put, um, Right down here because these are these are the API. So we're gonna separate these. Stuff. Okay. So right here, so we do the Mongo um, connection stuff. Okay. So first we need to get the URL to the MongoDB. So we put here const um, Mongo um, uh, DB URL. I put that like this. So it's basically MongoDB colon instead of the HTTP um, and then. We have the uh, local host, which is same as above. I probably should put that into a variable. Maybe I don't want to retype this. It has the port number 27017. That is a default port, okay? And then I also want to um, connect to this Mongo uh, DB uh, service, create a variable called, um, I guess call it client. We're gonna connect that to the Mongo client. So in the previous examples, or actually an older version, I guess, you can use the Mongo client to connect using callback functions. But I think the more modern ones are, you're gonna call it asynchronously using async and await, okay? So that means we're going to go ahead and instantiate a new MongoDB object uh, client. We pass into this constructor, basically it's a, it's a class. Uh, the URL, as you can see over here, the URL, which is the Mongo URL up there. And that's all we need, basically. You can all ignore the other ones. So we are going to create that object. Once you get that, then we need to connect to the actual database. Okay, so then we go ahead and do something like this. So client, as we see, um, what do we, client dot connect. Okay, this connect function is part of the Mongo client. You can see it uses a promise, right? So what that means is that you have to connect to the database asynchronously. Um, otherwise, it, it, it will not work. Okay, so what you need to do is the following. You can create a function, uh, async function like this. Uh, maybe call it like connect. Okay, and then inside this connect, if you you want to put that in here. And you're gonna call these asynchronously using the await like that, okay? And they're gonna assign that result to a um, another, I guess, variable called maybe DB. Okay, so we make the DB connection, and then once that connection is made, then we need to select a database. As you can see, we haven't selected one yet. We just made the connection. So once the connection has been made, then we need to go ahead and create a collection, I guess we call it call for collection. 
And when I, again, do the await, the only reason why we do, we're do able to use this is, is because this outer function must use the async in front of it, okay? If you don't use that flag, it's not gonna let you use the await. Although I did hear that they are gonna fix this, update this so you don't have to make this into a async function. But as of today, you still need to do that here, okay? So um, what that does is that if you call this function connect, then you know, you're able to connect uh, to the database asynchronously. You're gonna wait until the connection is made before it goes on to the next one and so forth. Okay, so we go ahead and do the B dot um, collection. We pass into this collection. Um, actually, no, I made it wrong. It had to be like, uh, um, let's see, that's correct. DB is confusing. Actually, I should have, um, I should have, because this has to be like db.db. I have to select db first, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the, the db here is the local db. The db here is part of the, the client, okay? So a little bit confusing. I probably should use a different name, but I hope this makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna pass into a database called my, actually called unix 6, 6 db, right? That's the one I called in my Mongo uh, client over here. It's called Mongo, I mean, unix 6 db. And the collection is called students. Okay, so that is the one I'm trying to reference here. So I'm going to connect it to that DB. So maybe this should have, this should have been said DB here. I probably should make it more clear. Um, uh, let's see. Now that's confusing. Um, let's see. Let's put here connect. Let's put here connect. Sorry, all these renaming conventions. So I've made the connection, I select my DB, and then now I do the collection, okay? Collection is gonna be a wait. Um, uh, DB.collection, and it is called, um, what do you call it again? I think it's students. That is connection, collection. And then now I need to make a, um, a, a query okay so that at this point we have connected to the database and we have selected a collection and now we need to make a query so the query will be sent to a result and again we'll do await a collection dot find find all of them and we pass in the empty object you can leave like that you can leave it out it doesn't really matter uh, and i'm going to change or return that to an array and then, and then once you get that, then we can go ahead and console log or return this right to the browser, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be a browser or actually no, because I did not send that to the browser. This would have been put inside here, um, but maybe we we'll just do a return, okay? Return the result, wherever it is being called, okay? So also notice I did not trap any errors. If there's any error, you have to make sure that it's, is um, taken care of. So to do that, we have to actually wrap the whole thing into a try cache. I should have done that. Again, try again, move all of these inside the try. And then if there's any error, we're gonna catch the error here. And we're gonna just console all the error. Okay, so we can handle uh, that error and then we are good to go. Um, did I do all right? Okay, so we got that error taken care of. Okay, let me format the code here. And then, so if that's the case, then we're gonna return a, um, just return nothing at null value. It's a function, right? So when we get to that page, we can load that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another API to get our user. So I'll put here, go to the students link. Once I get there, I'm going to um, let or const result is coming from the connect function. Okay, you call the connect function like that. So when it comes back, then we go ahead and then uh, send it to the browser. So here. But again, notice this async function, we call it synchronously. So this function, this whole function here, it's a callback function. You want to make this into an async as well, 
right? So we can call this function asynchronously. I know it's really confusing, uh, but um, that's how async work, okay? So your async function can call other functions asynchronously using the await. And we'll see if this, this works. If there's any error, we'll catch it. All right, so kind of recap again. I'm creating a function to make the connection here. Okay, can make the connection. Um, then we um, actually, I might might be wrong here, but we'll see. It's too many, too many, um, too many things. I don't think I have to do our way here. I, I think I'm just gonna select the TB. I, I feel like it's not right. Uh, okay, collection. Maybe it's one, two. I think we don't need to put a wait. I'm just basically selecting. I'm not doing anything here. This is a query, so you have to wait for that. But the other two, I think just select. Let's see, okay? So um, go ahead and then run this. Actually, it's still running. I'm gonna go back to the browser and we're just gonna test this link here. As you can see, this is that link. I'm gonna go to the link that says students up here. Okay, as so you can see, the data came back already from the server, all right? So let me make it a little bit small. You can see it should have about 104 or three items in here all together coming back from the server. Okay, so it's working uh, nicely. Again, you don't have to do that here, um, but I, I'm sure if I, I, I don't think it would hurt to do that. I mean, you can throw all of these here to wait, but it doesn't really matter. I think in this case, uh, it, would, it, would sh it should still work. Um, because I'm basically, you know, um, see, as you can see, it works just fine, okay? So, but it, it's not necessary here. And we can leave it, it's okay. It's just that we make this fine, you have to use the await. If I don't do that here, for the say, if I turn this off, all right, let's see what happens. Uh, usually that will hang your data. Uh, actually, it comes, actually, it's fine too. Let me see, that's great. Okay, so it does come through, that's, that's great. And... Maybe it, it comes to because, you know, I'm making a lot of async call here, um, but just to be safe, you could put a wait here, okay? I mean, it won't hurt. So anyways, recap, we made the, the we, we extract the Mongo client from the MongoDB library, okay? We then create this URL to the uh, MongoDB URL, the host and the port number. We create a new object of the Mongo client. We pass this connection string. This is a connection string to this client. So we can assign that to a client variable. Then we create a function called connect because we want to be able to connect these asynchronously, okay? So if you don't put that in here, you cannot call this outside, okay? In other words, you cannot do that here, right? It won't work. So we created, we, we made the connection assign that to the variable. And then from this connection, we select our database using that DB function. And then from this database, you need to select a collection called students. So again, collection is synonymous to a table. We assign that to a collection. And then from that table or collection, we can then perform the CRUD operation. This is one of the CRUD operation functions I just showed you earlier. So we want you to find that result. We turn that into an array assign that to a variable, and then this function returns the result if it's successful. If there's any error here, then it's gonna return nothing down here. You can put an empty object if you want. Maybe we'll do something like that, okay? So let's just say I accidentally put a, um, an error here. Let's say that, I don't know, uh, put T, T here for some reason, okay? I mean, it may not be an error, but you're gonna get a blank result maybe, let's see. So do a refresh. You can see that I got a blank result coming back because there is no such thing as a students here. Um, okay, so so let's do that. All right, so the find is one of the functions. If you want to filter, say I want to return only the students or a person that has ID of five, then you pass in here the option, the, the key values, right? So I want to get the, um, Let's say what what are the options they have? We have um, let's see we have what oh I made a mistake let let's turn this off this is it just me has a has a so everything's live because of the no monitor okay 
So let's say I want to notice this uh, underscore ID. This is the MongoDB um, primary key. And I did not have one for my, my program because you know I did not choose to do that. If you go away, over here, you'll see that all the IDs are managed by MongoDB. But there is an ID field, which is yeah, I manage, right? So it's called just ID without the, without the underscore. We can uh, look for ID of five, ID of 10, or we can look for all the genders or the IP address and so forth. Okay, so let's say we'll look for the ID only. So we'll go over here and I'm gonna look inside the filter. Um, where was it? Oh, right in here. Find all the ID with an underscore. Okay, the ID equal to five, right? It matches that five ID if there is one. If it's not, you're gonna get an empty result. So let's see if that is true. I'm gonna refresh this page. Boom, and there it is, the ID of five for that particular student. I just did this performance uh, operation by, you know, uh, hard coding this in here. So this is like a get one type of IP, I mean, uh, right? So this is like a get all students. This is like a get all. So therefore, when you, when you do the connection, when I call this connection string, I don't pass in any parameters. So this is will be just something like that, right? Pass nothing to that, I get a get all. If you want to get one, then usually you do something like this. If you remember, we're gonna pass in here the ID of uh, the particular student. And then maybe here you want to connect, once you connect, you're gonna pass in the ID of that particular, uh, you know, student. So you can do like that ID is equal to rec params dot ID, okay? And since the ID is a, um, if I'm not mistaken, is a number, make sure it's a number. So you have to convert that to a number, okay? So that means again, change that, cast that to a number. And then you can, again, send that to the connection string up here. The same thing, you can use the same function, but when you do the find here, you have to pass in the option. So ideally, if you want to reuse this function over and over again for the find, then you put here, um, you probably want to rename this a little bit more meaningful, but say, let's put, I put option here, okay? And the result is gonna be an empty object. And I can pass here the option here, okay? So if I do that, um, I did not, you know, run this yet, but if I do that, I pass an empty object goes in here, I still gonna get all the students. So it should still work just like before, okay? If I refresh this without the ID, you can see everything comes through, okay? So now this time, if I'm going to use this link to pass a single ID that I pass to this connection string, the object of, ID is equal to ID, okay? So this object goes in here, right? Goes in here, replace this, and then it passes that to the find function. And now I'm gonna return only the single ID of that student. Okay, so let's go back to the browser. And now let's see, this is the, for all of them. This time I just want the ID four. So you can see it extract that ID only. If I want to get the ID of the 45th student, you get the 45 here, okay? The, if it's something beyond that, it doesn't exist, then you get an empty, um, an empty object. Okay, so I just did the request for all and request for a particular student based on the ID field. And then if you want to select a different type, say you want to select um, by name, by first name or by, a gender, for example, you put gender here, right? And then here you will get the gender. And gender is a, is a text, so we're not going to con, um, cast that to, uh, then we're gonna put here gender here, and then you pass in the gender key, you, pass, you put here the gender, okay? So um, again, I believe it's case sensitive, if I'm not mistaken, we'll see. But let's say that uh, I'm gonna go over here, and let's test first in the browser, all right? So that works fine. If I go and type in the gender would be for 
um, actually, this will not work because if I type in like a, a mail, okay, it's going to be a blank because it's thinking that it's going to the same IP, right? Same address. It looks the same. All it is, it's just a different ID and gender here. So it would know which one to use. So if, if this is the case, because the URL is, you know, the same, then it would never call this one. Okay. So let's say that I want to call a uh, student, maybe by ID, you put ID, ID, here you put gender, or just G for gender, or it doesn't matter, it's gender, gender. Okay. So a little bit more unique this time. So the different IP address, I mean, um, endpoint. So now let's go ahead and try ID of one. You're going to get a student, right? Now if you put gender of uh, male, you can see it returns all the mail. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can see over here. Okay. And if you put lowercase, you can see it's case sensitive. Okay. So the female, again, all the female and so forth, right? So to avoid case sensitivity, then there is another thing that you need to do. Um, I forget which one. You can convert that to a, um, you know, uppercase, lowercase before you send it over. Or I think there is a function called collation. And here you type in here the, um, the type would be, uh, I forgot. I forgot what it is. Um, let's see. There is a, um, a property called strength. Okay. You set it to a one, okay? And, and yeah, there's another property, I forgot what it is. Let's see what that is. That, that will actually take care of that. Yeah, there's an error as you can see. Um, okay, so that's good. If I go to the terminal, it will tell me uh, the error down here, what does it say? Uh, collation is not a function. Um, okay, so it's probably something else. Maybe it's for um, a different thing. Okay, well, I, I need to figure out what that is. I mean, you can use, um, you know, a regular expression to do that, but for now, it, it's just, you know, just to make sure it matches the, um, the case sensitivity. There's a there is a way to do that. I just forgot what the actual syntax is. Okay, so I just show you here how you connect databases and how you can do all these operations work. Now to do the post and the put and the delete, it's the same thing, right? You already know how to do that crowd operations, um, get the API or the setup. The only difference is that when you do that, the function here in here would be not fine, but you know, uh, update one is the update update one, update many. There is a delete one, delete one, delete many. Again, the option is the same as that one, okay? And then there is also the uh, insert one, insert many. So in this example here, I'm using find in here. So ideally the name of this would be find, not connect. Um, if you just wanna connect, then you would not go and proceed with these two statements, right? So when you do a connection, then that is supposed to be just connection. So if I connect, once I make the connection here, I can also select the database and the collection and then return that back, right? In other words, uh, do this, okay? So let me update this. This is a little bit more uh, specific. So if I just wanna do a connection, then I'm gonna return the collection back, okay? So this collection here, they will stop here. So that means when I do the connection down here, I wouldn't say result. It would just be a connection. Um, I can call it, um, what should we call this one here? DB maybe, if that makes sense. And we made the connection. Uh, no, let's just call it, I just call it, um, uh, I don't know, I guess DB is fine. Okay, so we want to make the DB connection. Then we got, actually we got the database and the collection back already. Uh, and then in this case, they were not gonna pass the option here, okay? So to make this a little bit more usable, you would pass in here the database and the collection. Okay. You can set the default 
to these. Let's say this is my default database. If I don't include one, this is my default collection. If I don't include one, okay? So this will be my variable called database. And then this is the collection for that particular collection. So make it more dynamic. When you make that connection, then I will pass in here, right? If I don't pass in there, it's the default. If I do change it to a different database, you will pass both variables in here, okay? So once I get the connection, then this statement here, okay, will go right in here. So now it's very specific to a get because I'm getting only one. So I'm not passing any options in here now. And then you should get the same result, except this time it's not a deep collection, but it's called DB because I call it DB here, okay? So that is for that one. And then same thing, this will be down here as well. So let me copy this and we'll be down here. And let me just replace this. And then the option will be right in here. And so we don't need this anymore, right? Um, we still need to make the connection. Um, okay, I, I'm making every connection here Man, and before each call, usually you call it once and then that's it, right? It should be connected. Um, so I'm making like multiple connections, which is not ideal, right? So what that means is that, um, but anyway, let's let's test first. I'm gonna do the same thing down here, okay? So the first thing is connect the database. Let me move up here like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this again, right in here. And this I'm going to pass in this option to define the function. I'm going to destroy this. All right. So now, a little bit better, right? It makes more sense. This is just the connection. Either so here I would probably not return blank, but return like maybe null. Okay, you return null. You return you know empty object or undefined or false. It doesn't matter, right? So now. If I go back and try the code, it should still work. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's fine. Put mail, okay, it will still be fine. If I put something else, you get empty object. If I go back to the, all the students coming back, fine. Get the ID of one, okay, ID of 100, 100, and or 10, doesn't matter, so it will still work. All right, so now, Again, you don't want to make so many connections here um, because the connection is open and never really closed it. So I make two connections. Every time I call this, I make a new connection and that is not cool, right? I mean, eventually it will close, but if you keep doing this, it's gonna have a lot of, of connections. So when you make the connection here, and if it does succeed, you return. If it fails, then you log the error and then you return that. But before you return it, you want to close the connection, okay? If there's any error, then you want to do something like this. If only one is an error, because if it's error, it didn't connect. You want to go ahead and do like, um, uh, what, what do we call it? This is the connection. Uh, so let's see, client con, if I made a connection, well, I've, if I didn't make a connection, I don't need to close it, actually. Yeah, you don't have to do that. If it does succeed, then you can close it later. But you can write a different function to do that. So uh, what you can do is do something like this. So let's say that I want to put this outside in the global space, all right? So that I don't have to call this here every time. You would do something like this. Let me create a function because I want, I'm calling this asynchronously, right? So again, just like above, you have to um, do one or two things. I could use this and, and you know, just re revoke this or I create another one. And actually we just do this, right? We just do a, um, uh, let's see if I can do something like this. We do a db uh, let db is equal to null, okay? And then uh, I'm going to invoke this function like this, wrap the whole thing, and then invoke it. Okay, this, this is called iffy. 
uh, okay, it's called iffy function, meaning immediately invoking or invoke function expression. I create a function, I wrap it with the pure curly brace, I mean, uh, parentheses, invoke it right away. This uh, automatically invokes itself. Once I run that, I'm gonna go to here and make the connection so forth here. So instead of returning the collection here, I'm going to uh, set this global to that particular collection, right? So I'm not gonna return it, I would do this. Uh, this is already the DB, I don't wanna call it DB. Um, let's put here, uh, I call it DB, let's put it DB connect, how is that? So this is actually, I can call it DB. And we return that, you assign this global DB with that DB right here, okay? So I invoke it right away. I made the connection, you know, select my database and then select the collection, assign that to a DB variable up here in the global space. So when I do this part on here, I don't need to do that again. It's already connected, okay? That's what I mean by creating one function and then that's the connection only once. So now if it's correct, it should still work just like before. Okay, as you can see, I go back and delete this. So you can see all, all the connection, all the students, ID of 23 and so on. All right, so this is the better approach by just making one connection string call and then make that to a global and then you know, when you access these, you just basically go ahead and use it right away in here like this. Okay, so I think this is long enough. And if it's too long, feel free to, you know, rewind, fast forward to whatever you need to do. Um, so thanks for watching. Any questions, please let me know.